we're going to do it again. So over about an eight-month period, I kept stuffing their little suggestion box full of uh, requests bring to bring that thing back because uh, let me explain this to you. Instead of marinara sauce on it, it's a sweet potato puree that they put down on it. Uh, then a white cheddar that goes over the top. Then you've got little chunks of fried chicken, uh, waffles that are cut into sort of crouton-sized bites, Brussels sprouts, and uh, uh, little uh, bacon bits all over that. Then there is, as you said, uh, a syrup with it, which was a maple bourbon bacon gravy that you got to smother over the whole thing. And, I mean, it was like a heart attack in a in a pie, pie shape, but, oh, my God, was it amazing. So, first off, your delivery there was second to none. You sold that better than, you know, Guy Fieri. Like, how you slowly layered it. I was like, all right, I can get on board with, I'll try the sweet potato puree. And then you're like, oh, wait, hold on, we're throwing cheese on top. Oh, then it's meat, and then it's more bread, and then it's sugary sweets, and then it's more meat. Like, that sounds like a fire fucking pizza. And I, I get behind it because they do get a little bit off the wall with it. And you li- read it, and you're like, I don't know if that plays. Mine was a baked potato where they did, I don't know what the base was. I can't remember, but they had dollops of potatoes on it. And then bacon bits were the meat, and then they did more cheese on it. And then a drizzle of, like, it was a gravy of some sort. I was, it may have been just butter. I don't know. But it was, I was like, oh my God. I've ne-. So it was one of the more fuck worthy things I've ever put in my mouth. Gotcha. Yeah. So <laughs> they, uh, also cr- have a, a pulled pork sandwich there that has quite literally ruined pulled pork for me at any other establishment. It is <laughs> so <laughs> ridiculously good there that like anywhere else I go and get a pulled pork sandwich, I measure it to that and it comes up like far short. <laughs> it's surprising how good hops and pie, like, if you go, they've had like tacos, but they have like a sandwich of the week. They, they're, they're flying under the radar with their non pies. That's a great point. I didn't even think about that. Um, well, shit, that threw me off completely. So now I'm just thinking about pizza. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, we could stay on the pizza topic yeah, if you hours. want. You know, my, uh, oh, this is what it was. And I, this may have been the contentious point that I can't remember exactly if this was why I wanted to kill Zach or not. Pineapples on a pizza, yay or nay? I'm a nay. All right, see, we're good, we're Teach good. Each their own, you know, but uh, for me, that's not not right. And, uh, you know, I don't mind getting creative with toppings, some of the... Uh, but, you know, I feel like too many people focus on toppings, and oftentimes the crust is overlooked, which in certain cases can be the best part of a pizza. My uh, best example of this, it is actually a, a transplant business that sort of followed me out here from Detroit called Jets Pizza. Yeah, and, okay, they're out in Aurora. I've seen them. Uh, I think they now have one in Aurora. They've got one, uh, a couple uh, southern locations okay. down in like the Centennial Highlands Ranch area as Dub well. Herbs. And um, they are Detroit-style pizza, which is sort of a square pizzas done in a deep dish cooked in a cast iron pan. Kind of like and Blue Pan for those. Blue Pan are, is a Detroit-style yeah, pizza as well. But Jets is like nationwide. Like I have friends uh, that eat Jets in like in Nashville and stuff. Really? Okay, yeah, cool. So Good for I think them. They, they were a Detroit-based business to start, which, uh, you know, I know the sort of typical argument here is Chicago or New York style pizza. Yep. Well, uh, I hate to break it to both Chicago and New York, but Detroit actually won the pizza war while you guys were sitting there arguing. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm with you on that because like, and blue pan is my, I've had the jets, the one in Aurora, they deliver on Uber eats. Shout out to Uber. It's about butt fucking time. Y'all sponsor this podcast, but it doesn't suck. Like it's, and especially for chain, like, but that the texture of like how it's fluffy yet there's that crunch on the that outside crunchy crust man yeah. and it's one of the few pizzas where i actually think it's even better when it's reheated if you throw that sucker in the toaster oven and crunch it up even more it's like it's the only pizza out there where i will never leave a drop of crust all the crust will get eaten and some of the toppings might get left behind be like i'll, I'll even start bread first and you know we're a big ass to mouth podcast so if you want to go the opposite direction yeah. start with the pot <laughs> with the crust and work your way to the toppings in the middle I get you. And that's bold that you would say that there's leftover to, to reheat because I feel like when it comes to those, they're almost like six slices, you know, because they kind of come in yeah. like a, a rectangle. Well, uh, I'll fuck usually them up. Usually you should get the eight corner, which is every piece is the corner piece because uh, they realized this uh, – Growing up in Detroit, there was fights over the corner pieces. That because it had two sides of the crust that was on the edge of the the pan. Uh-huh. So like, I mean, there's I can't even tell you how much blood has been spilled in the world because of the fights over the corner piece of that. That's pizza. that's what's riddling so Detroit now is the fight over using, pizza. 
square pans, so every piece is a corner piece, and there are only four pieces per I get what pizza. You're and all so, right. you know, they, they do them all that way, so they're all corner pieces, and uh, everybody that, can be peaceful. That's what's, you know, that's why Ron on our test went into the goddamn stands. He wanted that pizza. Classic yeah. Detroit. <laughs> well, and, you know, even beyond, uh, you know, those, again, I think a lot of people don't realize that sort of the big pizza chains, uh, Domino's, Little Caesars, those are both Detroit companies. And oh, Little Caesars for sure. They yeah. uh, they sponsor the fo- the bowl game up there and the MAC championship. Yeah, well, I'm a big the, gambler, so gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now the Illich family, uh, you know, has a big presence in Detroit. They own the Tigers and the uh, Red Wings, and okay. you know, quite a few of the uh, the teams uh, that we hate here. Or yeah. as a Coloradan, we fucking hate the Red Wings. I'm not a native, but I was a fan when they moved from Quebec here. You know, they were awesome. They had all yeah. the players. And oh, they and those were the, the good old days when there was that rivalry. That was like easily the best hockey we will experience in our lifetimes, those games. Unbelievable, the rivalry there and how talented both of those teams were, how much they just truly hated each other. And it was and great to cheer against the Russians. There has been nothing even close to that level of intensity that I've seen in the 20 years since. Yeah, the Minnesota Wild is probably the team we hate the most. And the Preds now, the National Predators, they can suck a dick. But the Wild knocks down the playoffs probably the only... And something about those Upers, they just keep getting us. Or I don't know what, I don't know what we call Detroit. We'll just call it Detroit. But yeah, <laughs> fuck those teams. <laughs> um, actually, I did hear a fun fact, which you probably is not a fact for you, but for our listeners, this is what happens when you smoke and drink. Detroit is actually further east than like Atlanta, Georgia. You know, I'd have to. I'm, it's, geography is not exactly my forte, but uh, I've been told this because y'all are so far, like y'all are up there on that or the lake over there. Yeah, it is and on the far do, eastern if you do edge the launch, of the state. You know, I'd have to again fun pull fact. out the, the 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 ruler on the globe there to really find out. But that w- it wouldn't blow my mind if that's the case. The same highway I seventy five connects right from through Detroit all the way down to Atlanta. So. Uh, okay, so I was going to – we'll talk about your favorite – you've been here for 20 years, so you've inevitably hit Red Rocks and hit the best venue of them all, the Fillmore Denver. But before we do that, I want to talk a little bit about Detroit. Okay. How often do you go to Canada? Uh, all the time. I mean, it's, it's right, right across the river there. Up? You know, uh, growing up in Detroit, I think that's uh, sort of a rite of passage, especially in the era I grew up in where the legal drinking age in Canada was 19, but – extraordinarily loosely enforced. If you had a note on a napkin from your mom that says you were 19, you were good to go. And uh, I've seen Canadian bacon. I know how stringent those cops are over there. They can yeah. be ruthless. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it's, uh, you know, was uh, interesting living, uh, you know, that close to, you know, what's technically another country, but it's closer than any other the state to you state. where we lived, yeah. you know. So it was uh, very easy. And in that area, you didn't need a, a passport or anything. So there'd be... Wait, why wouldn't you need a passport? Uh, they were open border between Canada and the U.S. in that area. You just, you know, oh, could go nice. across. It wasn't just really willy-nilly. controlled. Like you had to be, you had to really seriously be stupid and draw attention to yourself to get stopped going through the border there. I love it. All right, so this is a true test of just to make sure you don't have any Canadian blood in you. We, gotcha. we would hate for that to happen. Okay. What do you dip your fries in? Uh, my fries usually ketchup. Occasionally, if I'm at a fish and chips place, a little malt vinegar. Okay. I thought I didn't know if it was going to be like, oh, I have to have mine with gravy and poutine, or, no. or gravy and chips, or mayo. If you had said mayo, we'd have ended this yeah. episode right now. All right, so we'll get back to our regular. St- I just wanted to look. That's that's what you get today, guys. That's your geography lesson and a little bit about Canada. Uh, we try to stay away from Canada for the most part. Gotcha. All right, so 20 years. There's been a hell of good shows that have come through. You've mentioned, you know, y'all have had, y'all have pulled them for the, co- the the tournament before, so you obviously have quality taste. Favorite show you've ever caught here in Colorado? One that sticks out? You know, one that really sticks out to me was actually when uh, the Fillmore had their grand opening for the the venue. Uh, the Trey Anastasio band was coming in, and it was one of the hardest tickets to get, you know, ever. They sold out in minutes, and it was one of those that there was... 99 you know, was heroin tray, right? Oh, uh, yeah. It was, uh, right you know, in right in that, uh, the, the, the heat of that moment. And, uh, you know, just amazing music that he was putting out in that era, regardless of his, uh, you know, substance abuse, which, you know, oftentimes is tied to musical creativity, unfortunately. But uh, Luckily for everyone, it's yeah. not with Trey, because he's still fucking killing yeah. it today. But, Absolutely. Yeah. Tab was the one? Yeah, well, and this uh, 
you know, was uh, great times, but a really difficult show to get into. Thousands of heads outside with their finger in the air trying to get it. But luckily for me, this was still in the era where if you had connections for good weed and you brought a little extra along, you could just, you know, open that little sack in your pocket and waft that smell around and you were finding a ticket if you had good weed in that era. So it wasn't so. sliding 20 to the guy at the door. It was like somebody, if you had the fire dub, they were like, Our, and we'll dive into that too, but... Like, kind bud? Yeah, I got a spare for you. Dickhead yeah. with $60? Get out of here. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, you know, it was, uh, used to be able to use, be used for currency for just about anything here in Colorado, especially in the Boulder. In Boulder, it was, uh, you know, as good as cash anywhere you went. Better was, than oftentimes. It was better than cash when I was in college in Mississippi. It was like, oh, yeah. uh, here's $20 grams of White Widow. And then, like, actually, it's 25 This is good White Widow. Yeah. And you just see that shit. It's already been rolled. You're just like, I'll take three. And just stings when you pee a little bit. But yeah. I like it. So Tab, but, uh, 20 years ago, opened the Fillmore? Yeah. Uh, the first show there. And uh, I guess either fortunately or unfortunately, depending on how you look at it, I don't think they had really worked out the acoustics in that facility yet. And it is absolutely the loudest concert I have ever been to. And everybody I know that was there walked out and for the next week was saying, What? What? I can't hear you. My ears are still ringing. You know, like... It just, you know, shook us to our core how loud that was. And I think they uh, very quickly realized they needed to, although they Start had this cool new it. sound system, they could not, uh, you know, use it to its full potential given the size of the venue. Man, I'm not going to lie. That's probably the, so we ask the question a lot, you know, what's the best show you've caught here in Colorado? Grand opening of our sponsors of venue, one of the most renowned, you know, names in the industry. And then you get one of the most renowned musicians possibly arguably one of the greatest guitarists as well you know everything top to bottom that's a fun you knocked that out of the park yeah i mean that was a, a great show and uh there's not a know, lot that's going to compare he's had a the, number of great shows at that venue though including you know the uh stint he did with lake les claypool and all of that oyster head yeah and, uh, the dude uh, uh copeland from uh the police, police yeah. yeah i was a big i'm a big 80s guy shout gotcha. out to my boy sting oh yeah shout out to live nation billy joel coors field <laughs> August, the day before your event. So uh, I'll be going from Billy Joel, zero sleep, tea time, 9 a.m. Just how Uptown Girl likes it. Yeah. Uh, what's it called? All right, so I guess that kind of leads us into our – This. do you have a show that you're looking forward to this year that we haven't checked off, maybe a Red Rocks or a Fall um, Run? You know, I just caught the motet at Red Rocks. Uh, it was like a week or two ago. Two Fridays uh, ago. They absolutely just killed it out there. And, uh, you know, great to see uh, Galactic still going after all these years as well. And uh, uh, the name of the opening act is slipping my mind. But they were really impressive as well. And not what I... Uh, I don't know if I've heard of them. Oh, gosh, I'm trying to remember what their name was. Uh, oh, wait, you said slipping your mind as well? No, no it's slipping my mind, you know, the, the name of the what the, the opening OG. act was, but they were absolutely fantastic. Uh, I was really impressed. When you said that, I was like, time out, I've never heard of that name. And then it was actually escaping they you. They were almost was like an acid well. jazz power trio with, like, a, a really heavy-hitting drummer and then two guys playing various uh, brass instruments with synthesizers attached to them. And I don't know that I've ever seen a three-piece band that produced as full of a sound as that, where it, like... You know, it seemed like there should be a much bigger team working on creating that much music. It was I'm, really impressive. It, uh, what juxtaposed, it's like Lettuce, who brings out 12 people, and you're yeah. like, holy shit. Or, you know, Cheese, who brought out River Dancers last yeah. week. You know, so, like, it's crazy what not only technology's been able to do for the music. Shout out to our friends Wiz Khalifa and 21 Savage. But at the same time, when, like, real musicians get a hold of it, it's actually pretty fun. So, I like it. And, you know... Just to take a subtle jab at Zach, because he's not here, I'm so fucking glad you didn't say Disco Biscuits. You know, or Disco the Magic Beans Biscuits or... is uh, maybe a little too far to the electronica side for me. It's, uh, <laughs> you know, to each their own. I, you know, they're very talented folks, and uh, we used to actually party with those guys quite a bit. They knew a good buddy of mine in college and, uh, you know, enjoy the scene, all of that. It's just doesn't hit me in the right spot you know yep and that's called the g spot zach for those that are listening zach uh but i just wanted to take that so because i remember he was like yeah i've listened to your podcast i know how much you hate the biscuit and i was like <laughs> i do i do hate this biscuits. and it's not so much the band because the music is you know entertaining ish you know it's like i can listen to twiddle every now and then one song on the radio or on you know the playlist but like having to actually like go to cervantes and catching one member of them like in a 
a, a side project or you know spinoff, it automatically the crowd just automatically sucks. It just, it just only yeah. takes one. It only takes one, <laughs> and they seem to have a ton of them. So, all right. So we've we've dived into some of our Denver favorites. Um, this next section, um, I'll get you out of here soon. But this is a real hard hitting question. This right. is called rapid fire, all and right. it's brought to you by our friends at. 